плакучие ивы, И сказка ланяется над врачом, Струйки бегут торопливо, Щепчут во мраке ночной, Щепчут все щепчут, во мраке ночном Думай о прошлом далеко Мне навевают они Сердцем больным одиноки Рвусь я в тепле How are you? I'm Yan Ling. Among all types of travel, what's your favorite? My favorite one is, of course, time travel, especially when you visit a city. You really need to peel off layers and layers of life stories covering on top of each other, happening in different time zones in the same space. What's the best place to see us? In the streets, right? <laughs> In 1896, Russia seized the power from Manchurian government to extend its Siberia Railway from Vladivostok into northeast China. Harbin, then only a cluster of small villages on the bank of Songhai River, was chosen as a management center. Harbin, as a modern city, started to take shape. When the railway was completed in 1903, Harbin became the virgin land of opportunity that attracted people seeking freedom and fortune from all over the world. Known for its economic importance, cultural tolerance, and racial variety, Harbin evolved into a true international metropolis. At the peak of immigration, more than half the city's 300,000 inhabitants were foreigners. Harbin boasted many China's first, first the ski resort, first the city bus, first ballet school, and first cinema. One ticket, please. Zhongyang Dajie, the central boulevard, is a perfect witness to the bustling city life at the time and even today. Old Harbin was designed for 300,000 inhabitants only. Today, the population spurred to 8 million. The exotic European flavor, especially Russian, still permeates many parts of modern city of Harbin. It's one of the few Chinese cities started to try to adapt the Paris model in city planning, building modern high-rises in the outskirts as a new town and leaving the old architecture remains mostly intact. Roaming around the stone-paved street in Central Boulevard is like touching and feeling the heart of the city, robbing with vibrancy and holiday spirit. That's what is amazing about street. Always the same, never the same. Is it possible for a passing through tourist to understand it? I guess as soon as you stop being a passing through tourist and simply start standing still for some time. With a history of 100 years, the Central Boulevard presents a cornucopia of architectural styles evolved over the past centuries in the West. At the turn of 20th century, in a thrill of new time and new life, booming Harbin encouraged various Western architectural styles. Plagiarism may be hard to avoid at first, but gradually they evolved into the style of its own. Like the surely dark new boom movement in the West, survived here in Harbin for over half a century and became one of its own main architectural styles. Modern Hotel was the first and most prestigious hotel in old glamorous Harbin. Today, it's merely known as the oldest one. The heyday of the hotel may be long gone. Amusingly, its sidewalk ice cream bar survived the day. It's still a popular spot among the locals. Oh,
the only change is one's glamorous bar to be seen turned into a quick stop for the locals, secretly indulging themselves on real ice cream and yogurt. A break from the army of tourists outside. Delicious, really. It's really thick. Um, I don't feel cold anymore, anyway. So uh, understandably, why this became Harvey's institution. I have to marvel locals' attitudes toward the weather. If walking in downtown in minus 30 degrees is not enough, just stop by a modern cafe and have a frozen yogurt. Yes, really if it cool. doesn't crunch enough in a month, top it with an ice cream. All good. Then head out for more ice and snow outside. Christmas is not an official holiday in China. The new China welcomed the concept of having a Merry Christmas, like paying a Happy Meal in McDonald's. It's exotic, and the label comes with joy. So why not? Besides, who doesn't like the idea of old fat beard men giving out presents? You are the youngest. Uh, How old are you? Uh, I'm 18. Oh, Santorina, 18 years old. Nice. <laughs> In the middle street, there are more than hundreds of them. You know, which one really can end up giving you presents? I don't know. And if you still believe in that Santa story, go with them for a long walk. The presents are holiday coupons and sale flyers. If you ever believing saving money is the same as making money, it's not a bad present after all. No matter towards which direction you walk in downtown, somehow miraculously you will find yourself come right back to the Saint Sophia Square. Saint Sophia was originally a small church built for army congregations. With an increase in believers of the Eastern Orthodox Church, the church was rebuilt in 1923. The construction took nine years. Most architectural remains in Russian style are religious in town. Tent roofs, Greek cross, and a multitude of dunes dominate the skyline of Old Town Harbin. Along the East Avenue, Dongzhijie, and West Avenue, Xijijie, many churches and buildings in Russian flair throw you right back to a nostalgic pre revolution Russia. I found a quite interesting, such heavily Russian-influenced city, so few locals celebrate Christmas according to Julian calendar on the 7th of January in Russian tradition. As a second thought, it's not that strange at all. Just like most parts of the world today, religious meaning is merely a backdrop of the holiday. Like a church to a city, it stands more as a city's monument than the house of the god. Just a perfect day Drink sangria in the park Gokuli Avenue is one of the oldest streets in Harbin. It was briefly named Revolution Avenue during Cultural Revolution time and got its original Russian name back in 90s. More suitable for its exotic flavor. The street was built overriding Magical River, creating a small charming street park in the middle of downtown. With water and ice view, bars and coffee houses lining along, it's like another small town inside of a town. A great place to take a break from your walk. The famous Russian Market Street hides right beside the Gorgali Street Park. 
The street is lined up with local markets and shops selling. Well, they're very predictable. Good about being a tourist that you can walk around in those tacky souvenir shops and don't feel bad conscious, you know. And you never know what you find. Locals don't know how much they have missed. Northeast China is not a place for animal rights activists. No one can easily survive the temperature without natural fur, the gift from nature, as Northern Chinese put it. Even you're not a serious buyer. As a tourist, <laughs> no, like enjoy a the fun and freedom of simply right? being. River winding through Harbin, serving as an important trade artery both in summer and winter. It divides the city into the north and south part and forms the two riverside parks on each side. The north side of the riverside park has been Harbin's Hampton since the turn of last century, a vocation of summertime, where the rich and glamorous build summer house lounging in summertime. Also, it's public area for the ordinary people to get a breath of fresh air in nature at a very reasonable distance and cost. Doesn't this look like a little creamy house? You know, like a cake house. Many part of Harbin, you will walk around. It feels like a working in a cartoon world. If you're like a kid, it's definitely a paradise. If it's just like a kid, like like me, at least winter wonderland. Even though every move you make, every breath you take, you will feel the power of nature, the coldness. 